So what we're going to start with is some going over these laws of what you do when you're multiplying. Um, and it's called, we're like multiplying powers with the same base. What's important about this, we're going to simplify expressions. It says I can simplify expressions using exponent laws. That's what it says. So we're going to simplify expressions. Again, we're going to get like some nasty long expression. We're just going to make it smaller and easier to write, less, less writing. Also, sometimes things work out really easily. You get something that looks really complicated, but turns out when you apply a couple of rules, it makes it nice and simple. You'll see what I mean in a moment. Um, so what's important about this, oh, off to the side here, I'll do this. I don't know that you have to write this down. You can if you want. Um, this is what we would, we would go, let's say, uh, 3 to the 4. Okay, so the whole thing is called, we call it a power. The 3 is the base. And the 4 is the exponent. Okay, that's just some terminology. And what does 3 to the 4 mean? Is it 12, 3 times 4? 3 times 3 times 3 times Yeah, so this means... 3 times 3 times 3, 4 times. 4 3's multiplied together. That's what an exponent means. We all know that. That's obvious. But it's funny how, again, sometimes your brain plays this trick on you and does 3 times 4. Because you know it's multiplication and you're going quickly and you don't stop to think. And, you, and instead of writing 3 to the 4 would be 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 again is 81. So that would be 81. But by accident, sometimes people would write 12. So if that ever happens to you, Reflect and say, I got to slow my brain down when I'm doing this stuff because it, it's automatically doing that. I see people like in every grade all the way up to grade 12, even like calculus students sometimes make that mistake. So it happens to everybody, right? Um, and it's just about slowing down. So the base of this question here that we're looking at for the multiplication law is A. It's A to the M. Why do we introduce variables like this? This is the general case. So A could be anything, M could be anything, N could be anything, and it's how we show rules in mathematics, right? We use variables, so then we have a rule that applies to any number, and then we look at specific examples to see what it looks like. Who remembers what you do when you multiply powers with the same base? These two powers have the same base, A and A, but they have different exponents. What do we do? Nobody remembers? Does anybody have a gut, something that they want to say, but they're like, oh, I might be wrong, so I'm not going to say it, because who cares if it's wrong? Yeah, you add, you add what? The exponents. Do you remember that now? Multiplying powers of the same base, you add the exponents. So this is equal to a to the m plus n. So for example, if I had 2 to the 4 times 2 to the 3, that's going to be 2 to the 4 plus 3, which is 2 to the 7. That sound right? Pretty simple. Why would you want to do that? In this case, you probably wouldn't. In this case, you probably wouldn't care because 2 to the 4 is 16, and 2 to the 3 is 8, and now I can do 16 times 8 and get my answer. There's not really any reason, but sometimes there absolutely is a reason where you need to use this rule and it's very useful. If you want to see why it works, 2 to the 4 is what? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the 3, so times, 2 to the 3 is 2 times 2 times 2. Well, that's 2 to the 7. That's 2 times itself. Seven times, because I've got four here and three here, right? And it doesn't matter that the multiplication sign, the red one, came from somewhere else. It doesn't matter. Math doesn't care about that, okay? So the order of the multiplying here really doesn't matter. So you could, you could regroup this into two twos and five more twos. Like, you could do whatever is convenient. And that's what simplifying is all about. You're doing things that are convenient for what you're trying to do. Whatever that happens to be, factoring, solving, graphing, I don't know. Right? In this case, there is no what we're trying to do. We're just. 
Yeah, it would be two to the, yes, two to the seven. Well, th this is, we're just looking at the laws right now, but I think when we get to the examples, it's going to say right as a single power. So that means you've got like a two to the four and a two to the three, you're combining them. That's what your instructions are going to be. If that's what it says, then yeah, your answer would be two to the seven. Your answer, what is two to the seven? Did anybody do it on the calculator? 128, is that right? But don't put 128, that's not what we want. We don't always want a number answer. Why? Well, because we're just practicing the skill. So for a lot of what we do today, the answer you, what, that you'd want is two to the seven. Okay, what about this one? A to the M divided by A to the N, what's the rule for this one? If you want to write it down for the first one, it would be multiplying powers of the same base, you add the exponent, that's what you'd say, we're not gonna bother writing it. Very nice, it's neat that this happens all the time in mathematics, and that's why math is what it is. Everything fits, everything makes sense. When you're multiplying, you add, so when you're dividing, you subtract. Because what's the opposite of multiply, division, what's the opposite of adding, subtracting, right? So it all makes sense. So this one is gonna be A to the M minus N which I can't actually do, so we leave it that way, but again, that's, the, that's just the rule that we're doing. So for example, um, five to the six divided by five squared is five to the six minus two, which is five to the four. Um, you don't need to write that middle step, we're just writing it to remind ourselves because it's a lesson of what you're doing. But for your work, you wouldn't need to write that step. But you need to know that step. This is a good example. What's 5 to the 6? To the 6. 15,625. That's a big enough number. I don't really want to write it. So leaving it as 5 to the 6 or writing it as 5 to the 4 instead of writing it as a really big number is maybe something that you would do, right? It's easier to write. It's less writing, 5 to the 6. So that's sometimes we leave things that way. And then power law. So this is a power of a power. It's a to the m all to the n. What's the rule for this one? Who remembers this one? Sure. Right. You could, yeah. We'll do, we're going to talk about those tomorrow. Nice. You multiply the exponent. So it's a to the m times n. Very nice. So for example, something like a to the 3 all squared, you can have variables to an exponent as well for sure, is a to the 3 times 2, which is a to the 6. And there's a really good example of when you would want to be able to use these laws to simplify when you have a variable that you can't evaluate. Those other ones, when the base was a 5, you can get that number, you can get that answer. Maybe the number is better even though I was saying it's big and that kind of thing. Maybe you actually want the answer. But in this case, we don't know what A is, so we can't answer it, So we, but it's nice to simplify, right? Okay, let's try a few examples. So it says, write each of the following as a single power. Sometimes this means simplify. Simplify is this funny word that's used all over the place in mathematics. Sometimes it means do one thing. Sometimes it means do another thing. It's never really clear, but it always does mean you're taking something bigger and hopefully making it smaller and more simple or whatever, if you can. So what's this one going to be? 7 to the power of 5. Yeah, 7 to the 5. So I'm going to write this one last time. 7 to the 3 plus 2, 7 to the 5. Next one. 3.14. I don't know why that's in brackets. The, um, the practice that you're doing today came out of a textbook, and the textbook has brackets around decimals, so I think this is done this way just so it looks like the textbook kind of thing, but the brackets there are not necessary. You don't need a bracket around a decimal. Somebody else? Who can give me this one? Ben, do you know what it is? What do you do when you're multiplying? Add the exponents, thank you. So it's going to be 5 plus 4 is 9. So 3.14, that looks like pi rounded, right? To the 9. That's it. That makes sense? Ben, what do you think? You okay with that? Are you not buying it? You got it? Yeah. What about this one? It's a little different.
Again, in mathematics, you know, we start looking at something like, um, uh, don't write this down because I'm just going to babble here for a minute. 2 to the 3 is 8 because it's 2 times 2 times 2. I can actually do that. A lot of people like that because it's like concrete and it makes sense and you can actually do it. But then they don't like it when you get things like a plus b in there because you can't do anything with it. But it's the same thing. Whatever the base is, it's this whole thing to the 3, right? So if it was a cubed, it'd be a times a times a. It's a plus b times a plus b times a plus b. It would be 3 of those multiplied together. And that's nasty to write, so it's way better to write a plus b to the 3. And I can use all the same rules. So what do you think it is, Zach? A plus b to the power of 10. Yeah, very nice. To the 10. You definitely need brackets on this one. Great question. Because if I did it this way, a plus b to the 10, the 10 is only on the b. It's when I add brackets that it says it's around the whole thing. And it's also not equal to, you don't have to write this down, but a to the 10 plus b to the 10. Those are not the same thing. We'll talk about this down the road. You talk about that a lot in grade 10, and people make that mistake all the time. It's not true. It's one of these famous mistakes that drives math teachers crazy because we talk about it over and over and over again, and then people still do it. <laughs> but it's not that, right? So it's something else, which we don't have to know right now. But OK? Next one. How do I do this one? Eunice, what do you think? Why would you say that? Ah, so 2 times 3, do the 3 times the 2 to give you the 6, and then add the exponents. What was the rule that we talked about at the beginning? This is all multiplying powers with the same base is when we can apply. So if this was a, this is a good example, to the m times b, to the n, you can't do that. It's only when the bases are the same. So now what do we think about this one? This is a trick question. It's a little bit mean of me, maybe. But you can't simplify this. That's not to say you can't answer it. The instructions were to write as a single power. This one you can't, so you don't. I, I would always say, if I don't think I would give you a trick question like this on a quiz. Maybe I would, I don't know. Um, don't leave it blank, because it looks like you didn't know. Say, can't do it, right? Or not possible, or like whatever. Explain, do something, not with a lot of words, but say something. Don't Never leave a question blank. If you can't do it, say unfactorable, or say can't do it, can't be done, impossible, something like that. Um, what are the if it said... It's hard, it's hard for me to say because it could say all kinds of different things. Like, I don't know. But if it says evaluate, then you evaluate. And 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9. 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 2 times 2. So this would work out to 72. Like, you can answer it. And so if it said evaluate, that's exactly what you would do. Yeah. But it's, that, the reason the example is there is to demonstrate a little bit better what we're actually doing. Multiplying powers with the same base. What would multiplying powers without the same base look like, while well, you don't do it. You can't. 11 to the 7 divided by 11 to the 3. Somebody else. Sarah, what do you think? Very nice. So it's 11 to the 7 minus 3, which is 11 to the 4. That's something you got to remember. That's going to come up uh, definitely in this unit for the next like four days. We're going to kind of practice this kind of stuff and do some some new things that you haven't seen before. Um, but this is these are important rules that you want to always remember, always know. What about a fraction? So when it's in brackets, I'm going to show you something. This is off to the side. Write this down or, or not. You can do it off to the side or you can just watch. It's up to you. If I had 2 over 3 um, to the 4, like that, with no brackets, that means like 
2 to the 4 over 3, technically. It's a, a little bit weird that the 4 is written over. Like you, you would probably want to write it more like that so it's clear. If I have 2 to the 3 all to the 4, that's 2 to the 4 over 3 to the 4. Like the exponent goes on both. We'll talk about this again. It's not really what we're doing today, but that's what that means. So when it's in brackets like this, like question F, the 10 would apply to both the numerator and the denominator, the top and the bottom. That makes sense? But the rules are the same. I have the same base. The base is a half. And what do I do when I'm dividing powers with the same base? Subtract. So it's 10 minus 4. So it's 1 half. It definitely still has to be in brackets, and it's to the 6. Easy enough so far? Another one? It looks like that. One half in brackets to the six. Nanette, do you remember how to do this one? You'd multiply, so it's going to look like this, right? 2 to the 3 times 2. You happy with that? And 3 times 2 is 6, so 2 to the 6. So this one's a fraction. So because the base is a fraction, it has to be in brackets. But then I've got brackets because there's two exponents as well. And again, we're multiplying. So 2 times 4 is 8. So this is going to be 3 over 2 to the 8. Any questions? We kind of, are we good? We kind of already talked about this, but what happens if I don't have a number? So that's the base. I have a variable. Doesn't matter. Same thing. x to the 5 divided by x to the 2. How can I simplify this? Tanner, do you know how to do it? Uh, yeah, it's kind of small. x to the 5 divided by x to the 2. Well done. It seems easy. It seems like maybe this is too easy, but don't forget, like, there's this funny thing that happens in math where, like, everybody complains for the first few days that it's too easy, and then all of a sudden it gets hard, and then they complain that it's too hard, right? <laughs> but um, when you start jumbling this up with all the other stuff that you have to do, that's when you start to make mistakes. So it seems easy when you're just doing this on, the, on, on its own on one day, but it does get trickier. Ah, this is interesting because negative a to the 5, actually I'm going to pick a different one, to the 4 is not the same as negative a to the 4. Okay, In brackets and outside brackets, sometimes it works out to be the same and sometimes it doesn't. So, and this one, for sure it doesn't. So the fact that the, the negative sign is inside the brackets with the a is really important, but everything else is the same. So I write the base like this, and I just do 5 plus 17, which is 22. Again, sometimes are going too fast and they get caught up, and they multiply those together because they see the multiplication symbol, and so they do 5 times 17, but no, you're adding, right? So be careful of that. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. We'll see that tomorrow. If you were dividing, you mean? Yeah. And you're dividing by a bigger number? Yeah. But we'll do it tomorrow. It doesn't, it doesn't come up today. And we'll talk about what that means and why. Okay, and y cubed all to the 5. Again, super easy. Just 3 times 5, y to the 15. Any questions on that? Okay, for practice, you're doing, for the worksheet that I'm about to hand out, every other letter, or we call that odds. So like A, C, E, and so on. 